Welcome to Breakpoint, the ServiceNow Developer Podcast. Hello, ServiceNow admins, builders, developers, and curious individuals. And I say that with the most utmost love and respect. Welcome to, welcome back to the Breakpoint Podcast, the ServiceNow Developer Podcast, where we bring you the latest tools, tips, and tradecraft to accelerate your career. My name is Lauren McManaman, Senior Developer Advocate, which might come as a shock. This is not my uh, first time on the podcast, but it's my first time kicking it off, and that is for a very special reason. If you are listening to this on the auditory channel, know that there is a video version to complement today's episode because this is the 100th episode of Breakpoint, which is a very, very special occasion that we want to celebrate with as much pomp and circumstance as possible. And we could not think of a better person to interview for this episode than Mr. Chuck Tomasi himself. How does it feel to be in the passenger side for once? I, I keep stepping on the brake like, like you're riding in a car. <laughs> like who let her have the mic? You're off to a good start. I'm so excited for this achievement. We've sent you a couple of goodies. Obviously, we're recording this in different states. Currently, I'm in Texas. You're in Arizona. We tried to send some things so that there is a couple of surprises coming towards the end of this podcast. So stick around. Now, Chuck, we have 10 big questions for you today. All right. 10 very interesting ones about your life, your career, and everything to come. So are you prepared to be in the hot seat today? Absolutely not. That was the point, right? No preparation. This is all off the cuff. Yeah, usually we do the courtesy of kind of prepping our guests, but I thought it might be kind of fun and a little bit of a challenge for ones to leave someone in blind and see how it goes. We'll all learn something here today. We sure will. So. Uh, to kick things off. Now, before we dive into the questions about the man himself, let's do a quick trip down memory lane for Breakpoint. Imagine where we are. It's July 22nd, 2020. And this is the first snippet that debuted where you said the purpose of Breakpoint was to have, quote, a discussion with others that work on the Now platform to share ideas and gain insights. Remarkably, still really accurate three years and 100 episodes later. What has led you to being so consistent with it? And is this where you imagine that consistency would lead to today? Wow, this almost sounds like a podcast we should have for the book, Podcasting for Dummies. <laughs> 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 uh, it really, it, it was a vision. You know, I think Lily Lee was the first person to suggest we do a, a podcast. And I was actually not that keen to the idea because a lot of what we do is around demos. It's around True. showing, it's around storytelling, it's, and, and just to have a, an audio podcast just threw me off a bit. And then the more I thought about it, the more we could explore the non-technical things. So career conversations came into play and we really focused on what was that vision of what a pod, a, a developer podcast could be. So we really stood it up on three legs. It was the career conversations. It was talks with product managers. And what's the third leg, Lauren? I'm drawing a blank. Like uh, oh, soft skills. Things? Soft skills. Oh, soft so skills. Yeah, like soft skills. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what it was. Yeah, I, ironically, I can't think of soft skills. <laughs> <laughs> well, which of the three has been the most surprising success that you didn't really expect to take off like it did? Well, I expected some interesting listenership to the product, especially around release time. We already knew that... The Tech Now episodes were big when a new release would come out. Everybody gets interested to find out what the new latest toys are. The yeah. uh, the career conversations were also fun. The The soft skills, we, we we need to do more of those, let's just say. But they're, they're all very interesting. In fact, there's there's been some times where I've contemplated breaking this into three different podcasts just for those trains of thought. But that would be three times the work. So, nope. Only so many hours in the day. Now, pivoting to questions about you yourself. Now, unlike me, I grew up as an only child. You grew up in a massive family, one of nine, if I am correct. And what's really lovely is like, you still take a tremendous amount of time and effort to like get the gang back together. I think it was just a few months ago, you all gathered together for your dad's bid 80th birthday party. So shout out to Mr. Tomasi on that huge accomplishment too. There's a quote that says, people are the average of the five people they spend the most time with. So oh I'm gonna gosh. take a twist on that. What <laughs> traits in yourself can you attribute to those other siblings and their influence growing up? Oh my goodness. I, you know, there are so many times when I'm editing the podcast, for example, and I will hear my sister's voice. 
Aww. or my brother's voice. So there's there's a lot of tonal qualities. We grew up. It, I wouldn't say it was like fiercely competitive where, where, where you're elbowing somebody out of the way Hunger to get Games the breakfast ask. table. Yeah, no, not that much. Uh, but we did, uh, the, it usually came in around the humor. When oh, somebody yeah. would make a wisecrack and then somebody would have to up them. We still do this. It's only it's in text messages now. We still have a text chain that has most of us and maybe even a brother or sister-in-law on there. And I think there's now one with the parents. So I have to be careful what we say. You know, we don't want to get <laughs> my mom and dad, even though we're well into our 50s and 60s at this point. Um, we, it, but it's it's that that level of humor that you know my older sister Marilyn. She seems to be a ringleader to this, but everybody chimes in. And uh, you know, sometimes you get a real singer and, and that just, you know, to brighten up each other's day makes it all that much better. That's such a sweet answer. I, and I think it really comes through in like a lot of the work that you do. I think that's something that people really respect about, especially with tech, right? You wouldn't usually think of tech as a form of lighthearted entertainment or edutainment. Uh, but I think that that's why a lot of your content is like so widely consumed because it's not only like very informative, but also very fun too. So shout out to your sister and siblings for encouraging that behavior. That snarky voice is always in my head. I've just learned to contain it once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are always a couple of uh, things that don't make the final cut of these episodes. So that's always Especially when fun. alcohol is involved in the filter and gets off. <laughs> Yeah. Join, speaking of, join a live coding happy hour for those couple of slip ups occasionally. <laughs> so back at Knowledge 23, I had the pleasure of finally meeting your wife, Donna. I'll toss up some pictures in the video format of one of the recent cruises y'all have been on. Y'all have been on a lot of fun cruises recently. If you ask a lot of people how they met their partner, especially people that have been married as long as y'all have, I believe when this airs, you'll have already celebrated your 35th anniversary. Mm -hmm. It's usually a bit of kind of a meandering conversation as the couple you know, put together the specifics, but not you. I really want to open the floor for you to treat us with that story because I find it to be a very, very sweet story. <laughs> Uh, you want my version or you want Donna's version? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we met in college. We met in college in the fall of 1986. We had a couple of classes together. And, uh, you know, I did as most college guys did, looked around the room and was there anyone, you know, attractive, interesting, et cetera. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we had some lunches together. And then as it got into the next semester in, the, they called it winter 87, we had three classes together and I needed to go for some training. I was working at a local computer store and we had to be IBM certified to be an IBM dealer. And I was a service technician at the time. No surprise there, you know, college tech, computer science degree, that whole thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, we had become, we started becoming good friends. Well, there was also Donna's other friend. And oftentimes when we went to lunch, it was the three of us. So they were having this debate on who I was interested in. <laughs> is a mystery donna was saying gretchen he likes you and gretchen was saying no donna he likes you and back and forth i'm like i don't know well, it sounds like <laughs> i'm gonna win either way you know <laughs> i didn't find this out until later well we had i i had this ibm training and i i i was dialing in from the computer store into the mainframe to do some of my work assignments or my homework assignments and she worked in the computer lab as a lab operator basically you know, somebody who makes sure the batches are running and gets the paper off the printer for all the students and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so we had a communications channel, very, very early email. This is like Not 1987. Slack. <laughs> no, Not this Slack is, or Teams? <laughs> dial up to a mainframe and type in your emails. Well, I, had, I said, I am headed to, uh, I'm going to be away for a few days. Could I get you to uh, give me the assignments when I get back? She goes, sure. Yeah. Okay. What is your phone number? And that's how I got her phone number is, and now I could call her, you know, afterwards somewhere in a scrapbook, I still have that dot matrix printout of her phone number. So that's so sweet. Yeah. I, even in, in, in times at work, you've been like, oh, it's the anniversary of our first date. I'm like, you remember the exact day of your first date? That's so I sweet. I remember the four most important dates when we met our first kiss, 
when we got engaged, and of course, when we got married. And her birthday, you know, that's also important. So. Always a winner. Oh, those yeah. are the four ma- gentlemen listening to this podcast. Take take note. It's very, Keep very track. sweet. Yeah, <laughs> whatever it takes. If you got to put a reminder on your calendar or write it down on your bathroom mirror, whatever it takes. Keep those in mind and celebrate them. So, you know, I got her phone number and we uh, it was April 8th, mm. 1987. That's how I remembered the uh, the next total solar eclipse date too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know those really common in tandem things. You know, dates and, and solar events. <laughs> right, very rare things. A kiss from a girl. Well, she had called me up. We had this secret line, I, and let me know if this is going way too long. But no, when I worked at the computer store, there was rollover lines. So if you dialed two two eight eight five one five and that line was busy, it would roll over to 8516. And if 861 was busy, we had a third line for 8517. Rarely did anybody call. So I gave Donna the middle number. Call me at work at 228851. Why I remember these things, I don't know. That's but that why I need still still to tell about this, because I'm like, the amount of detail is startling. <laughs> <laughs> I've told this story a few times too. Yeah. But uh, I knew it was her if that middle line would light up because the light, you know, this is the old days when you had light yeah. up buttons on the phones. Mm. And I knew it was her. And she said, hey, I've got tickets to a Beatles tribute band tonight called 1964 is the Beatles. Would you like to go? And my very good friend, Scott, whom I talk to once a month, he was standing in my wedding as well. He will back me up on this. I fell on the floor. I was in shock. Oh. <laughs> The Beatles will do that. No, not the Beatles. The Beatles tribute band will do that. No, just having a date. He said, what's what? I've been asked out on a date. So (laughs) we uh, we went out and uh, afterwards we took a drive. Uh, This is in Marquette, Michigan, right on the shores of Lake Superior. So we took a drive down by the lake and, you know, went parking, turned on the radio. And here's a classic song from the 80s. Most people who've been through that era will remember song by Atlantic Star called Always. Mm. Turn on the radio, and our first kiss was to that song. Fast oh. forward nine months, and I popped the question. She said yes, turn on the radio, same song. Oh, serendipity. That's, that's lovely. It was destiny. Destiny. So, yeah, we met in college, and I graduated a semester ahead of her. I graduated in, the, in December of 87 and had a job starting in January of 88. Uh, she went for another semester, but all that while, in two weeks, I went from starving college student, you know, and then I got engaged, started a <laughs> career, moved away. We start planning the wedding, got married in October of 88. You're like, I want all major life events in one semester. <laughs> life is like that. It, it, it can it, it can go, you know, pretty now, I won't say mundane, but pretty regular and scheduled for a while. And then you get a whole bunch of change all at once. How nice. That, that's such a lovely story. So one other attribute about you that a lot of external people might not be familiar with is that you're one of the most phenomenally organized people I know. He's even done- like- <laughs> You say so? You ought to see my sock drawer, man. <laughs> well, I mean, organizationally. Organizationally from like a data standpoint as well. So like you're very prepared. You're very analytical with how you, like you have a process for everything. He's even done like a mini masterclass for our developer advocacy team, for example. So one, another thing that you love to do are conventions, like Dragon Con comes to mind. You've been on multiple Star Trek cruises as well. As a partaker myself of planning big, audacious vacations and things like that, walk us through your perfectly planned out convention weekend. Oh my goodness. Um, Actually, (laughs) when it comes to the travel plans, uh, Donna does most of that. She goes, hey, we're uh-huh. taking, a, you, know, you want to go to Iceland? Here's a trip. And we found a group and I just go, yeah, sure. When is it? <laughs> uh, but she does most of the family organizing. But until 2023, I had been going to Dragon Con with my friends. So uh, she hadn't joined us yet until this year. And now she's going again. So it must have worked. <laughs> the The perfectly planned out one, I would say it's a combination of both getting to do something, that performance aspect, that participation, being, I don't know, in the spotlight and uh, you know, enjoying others doing that as well. So when it comes to the Star Trek cruise, for example, that's a lot of fun. 
because you get to intermingle with the celebrities, the producers, the you know the makeup artists, the, the the people that do that. They are the performers. However, there's karaoke, so I get to be a performer for a little while and also enjoy my fellow karaoke singers, whom I've met a ton of them over the years. Same kind of thing with Dragon Con. We do two panels, one for mm-hmm. our Star Trek podcast and one for our Technorama podcast. And the parade, which needs some organizing and coordinating because I'm the ringleader of that whole thing. We've got a group at the end of the Dragon Con parade. And I also do, I'll be doing two um, karaoke sessions. So I'll be the DJ for that for two nights. But I also get to, now this one's a little more on the you know work side. Not quite as much as knowledge. Mm. <laughs> Hopefully not. Good God. Hopefully not. <laughs> There, I did get to one panel last year on how to put on a bald appliance because I wanted tips on how to put on a bald appliance for the parade. So now what I do know. You mean bald, what's a bald appliance? What it's, the, it's the latex head that you put on to look bald. Oh, bald. like a wig cap. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, what is a bald appliance? When, when you put, yeah, no, no, it's not like your refrigerator got hairy, so you go shave it. That's what I thought. Yeah. I was like, what? Is that like a toaster? What is that? <laughs> in, in the makeup industry, you know, when when. Bald appliance. Yeah, okay. you, if, if you've got a nose piece, it's called an appliance. Yes. If you've got a head, you know, oh. putting on the Klingon thing, it's called a, an appliance. So. Got you. So moving on from fun stuff, let's get more into career a little bit. I have listened to a lot of career and business audiobooks, and you know my big criticism that I have of them is that a lot of people that write them are all kind of similar. They're all super type A. They had a plan when they were six years old and they stuck to it and they, you know, preserved that (laughs) dream and they never changed. Um, But what you've achieved a significant amount of success in your life on a different path. You're the host of multiple podcasts. You are the author of multiple books, much to Bill McDermott's chagrin. You were probably the most recognizable face of our company. Available. And you racked up over 38,000 followers on LinkedIn. Your path was very exploratory though. So what is the blueprint for being able to achieve success while allowing time for curiosity? I, I I want to back up, and you mentioned Bill McDermott. He's one of those people that seem to have that vision. You know, yes. I want to be CEO of Zero. Winner's Look, dream. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And God bless you. You know, I didn't I didn't wake up when I was ten years old and go, I want to be a developer advocate. <laughs> you know, that's yes. there was no such thing. You know, no. so I when I was ten years old, I knew it was going to be something STEM related. Mm. Uh, there were times when I wanted to be a dentist or orthodontist or something in the medical field. There were times when I wanted to be out digging dinosaur bones, you know, yeah. so it was, I always had that interest. And, and, you know, when you look in the rearview mirror, it's always easy to tell the signs that were on the wall. Uh, my friend and I would write secret code messages in, in school and send them back and forth and we would invent the code. So it's like, yeah, there were, there were, there were tips of, of, you know, software in there if you think about it i was yeah. in 1970 whatever it was wasn't a whole lot of software development going on in my school but um the, my secret has been follow your passion mm. do what you love find that interest and and let it bear fruit that's all i've done i've i've, I've applied myself where i'm interested the most uh, for a while, I was doing Unix system administration. I loved Unix systems and you know, probably still be doing that if, it, if, if there was an opportunity to do it. Uh, but that led to other things. And, and even at ServiceNow, when I got here as a technical consultant doing implementations, someone spotted me doing presentations or blogs or, uh, and then that opened up an opportunity to join this other group. And that is another group a couple of years later. So it wasn't job hopping so much as the opportunity is coming to find me. And I feel incredibly honored and blessed to have these opportunities in a growing organization. I know, you know, the economy has been different for different people. Yeah. The, the, you know, their companies may not have flourished quite as much as we have at service now, but even, in, I, I've basically worked for two companies, one for 22 yeah. years and, and service now since 2010. And it's, it's both have been growth companies more so in one than the other. <laughs> uh, but if, if you have a passion, certainly have that discussion with your boss and with your boss's boss to let them know what you would love to do. What is your, what is your next goal? 
hardest question I ever got asked was, where do you see yourself in three to five years? I and love my mom so much, but she asked me that all the time. And I go, I, I don't hate know. that question. <laughs> it wasn't until about five years ago that I learned how to answer it. It's not in terms of, I want to be CIO or I want to be, you know, that's, that's a noble goal. And if you want to have that specific of it, great, but be prepared to change your plans because all plans change. You'll be halfway there and the company will let you go or something. So it's, you have to be flexible. My, my answer to that is I want to continue to learn. I want to be able to share that with people. I want to be able to change their lives. You know, that's really the mission. In fact, if you go to my website, it says that I learn, I share, I change lives. It took a long time just to get that message in my head. It's been there for decades. I just didn't recognize it and couldn't articulate it until I was staring at that page going, I need something here. What is it I do? What is it I love doing? And that doesn't, it doesn't matter whether I go be a school teacher, I'm still learning and sharing and changing lives, or I'm a developer advocate or whatever. So hopefully I'm learning things that I'm really, really interested in, which I am right now. That's great. Uh, I love, I love to see that passion still. Cause like, like you said, you've worked for service now a considerable amount of time. So to stay that passionate is such a, a treat. Um, with so alongside of you, there are many great icons that have honed a similar trait. Jimmy Buffett with Hawaiian shirts, Taylor Swift with her red lipstick. I can guess Anna where Win this is going. Anna, Anna Wintour with her bob and sunglasses, etc. cetera. Carrot top for his shoes. Yes. <laughs> Over time, you've coned your own iconic look with your bow ties, one that you are wearing currently in the video form of this podcast. I assume the inspiration wasn't Pee Wee. So tell us the story of how that started. Nor Bill Nye. <laughs> Nor Bill Nye. <laughs> Nor uh, Doctor Who. <laughs> oh, the bow tie story again. Oh, this is this sorry. Is Gotta I tell know there's, it. <laughs> there's there's a number of people who have not heard this, and if you True. have, you probably fast forward for this part. Uh, <laughs> it started out with a dress code for knowledge. I think it was knowledge 12, 13. It was knowledge thirteen. Hmm. Again, apologize if it gets a little too detailed, but uh, the dress code was, hey, at Knowledge, we want people to be able to easily recognize the employees. So we're going to have a consistent dress code. So if you want to find an employee, you look for this characteristic. Hmm. Well, they said everybody's going to be wearing black shirt, black pants. This is back in the, you know, the red and white black logo oh, with the power yeah. button, which came out in 2012. Mm -hmm. So we were a year or so into that. Uh, black shirt, black shoes, black pants, black dress, everything is black. And I yeah, thought, everyone looks like a tech hand from behind like a stage production. <laughs> I thought we would look like a Johnny Cash convention or funeral <laughs> or something. It's like, this is, I needed to break this up and yeah. call back to being one of nine children. You had to stand out in some way. Okay. Yes. Not, not be obnoxious and throw bottles against the wall, that kind of thing. But unless you made yourself known, you might get left at the zoo. <laughs> So my my inner child survival skills kicked in and I went, yeah, I need some way to stand out. Just bend the rules, not break them. My initial idea was, I know I'll get a black kilt and I'll use that power button as the spore in and nah, I'm not wearing a kilt. <laughs> <laughs> so thank goodness, you know, history could have been quite different. Yeah, if you committed to plaid all that whole time. <laughs> nope. Nope. And it wouldn't work on camera, you know, right now we're shoulders up. So the, uh, the, in the, in the middle of the night, we were living in Wisconsin. I remember it was a cold February night. It was about 2 AM. I woke up and I went, I've got it. A bow tie. It packs light. I can wear it. I don't even see it when I, you know, I gotta look way down to see my chin. Mm. So this is perfect. I have no idea. And, and I even had a vision of what this final product would look like. Yeah. And, but I had no idea. And I went, well, these days you can find anything or get anything on the internet. So I started doing a little research and it turned into one of those adventure games, you know, where the king says, go save the princess. And to get the princess, you got to get the key. And to get the key, you got to kill the dragon. You know, you work your way backwards on this thing. Yeah. I went, to get the tie, I need fabric. To make the fabric, I got to have a pattern. To make the pattern, I got to have a graphic. And I'm going, well, who do I know that knows graphic skills? My buddy Craig, he can make me something. Craig Step. So I, Craig Step. Yep. He came up. I had the, you know, the vision in my head and we went back and forth. He's like, how's this? No, nope, no. Nope, make sure they rotate 90 degrees. Oh, how's this? Now I want it diagonal. Now how's this? So it was a little back and forth and having fun with that. Finally got the pattern, sent it off. 
and uh, got the fabric. And the lady in Maine who sews these things together sewed them and got them back. Meanwhile, I'm doing some business travel as far away as Singapore. And the bow ties came in and the fabric was off. It was like pink. It was way oh. too light. It, yeah. And the and the power buttons were too small. They look like little dots. <laughs> it's like polka dots. <laughs> you can't tell online. No. So I said, oh, this is not going to work. And she felt bad. She said, I'll pay for the next round of fabric. It's only like a yard of cloth. It wasn't that True. expensive. And I'll sew them up. And we had about two weeks before knowledge to get them. So the next one's come back and it was red -er. It wasn't like fire engine red is what I was looking for. Yeah. It was, it was kind of tomato soup red, but it was close enough. The, the buttons were bigger and I wore that one for a couple of years. Then we moved to, uh, that, that's how it got started. It was, it was really trying to bend the rules and break the rules. What I didn't count on was that it would become, you know, the, this thing. Yeah. I, I think it was the next year I'm walking into knowledge and I'm hauling the suitcase back. I'm at the check-in counter and somebody says, Hey Chuck, where's your bow tie? But it's in the suitcase. I'm, I, I, so now I have to put it on, you know, before I even get out of the car, you know, yeah. back in Hendersonville before we get to. Otherwise you get heckled apparently. <laughs> or it could be my, you know, you know, Clark Kent versus Superman. Take the bow tie off and no one knows who I am. Honestly, that happened to Knowledge Mastery with my pink glasses. I, I Similarly, I bought a pair of pink glasses right before Knowledge. I spilled coffee on them at the airport, and so I took them off. And I was speaking with someone for a long time. And they didn't like, know who you oh, were. You? They were like, oh, you're Lauren. I'm like, yes. You, am I that different without pink glasses on? <laughs> Apparently so. So I want to also talk about something a little bit personal. Obviously, this is not... Uh, we don't want to talk about just work. And I think one thing I really admire about you is a tenacity that you've always really embodied I, that comes out in things like knowledge that are really, really difficult and require a tremendous amount of effort and time and labor. And, you know, a lot of other people are like, gosh, what is going to be over? And you maintain this like very positive attitude. Um, it comes off in waves during every presentation, um, but it's made even more obvious by your choice of hobbies, right? You've you've run scuba diving charters in freezing Great Lake waters in your youth. You've obtained your second, if not third degree black belt, third, I believe. Yep. Third, yep. okay, I, I don't wanna misspeak. You've leaned towards interests in general that have and represent a lot of mental fortitude in face of something sometimes scary. It's not something I've really heard you speak about a lot publicly, but um, as of 2018, you've survived about with a big C and that's not COVID. You hear more and more each day about how important mind over matter really is. So how much should having that backbone help you during that really troubling experience? Uh, it was very much a part of it. Uh, the and thank you for the for the very kind words. I never never thought of some of those things quite that way until you said them. So the uh, the mental fortitude. It was very similar to you know when I got let go from my last job in 2010. Mm -hmm. I, it, it, maintain a positive attitude because that's what people will remember, and it also helps with your own internal energy. It 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 messed with my mind. There was a six week period from the time I was diagnosed to the time I actually had the surgery where I went to sales kickoff in 2018 and I had to keep this to myself. I mean, I, you know, John Donahoe is literally standing next to me and I, I was like, <laughs> it, it, it messed with my mind because like, how far is this spread? Are they going to find something else? Am I going to, you know, what's my life going to be like after this? But it, it that, that I didn't count on. The other thing I didn't count on, and, and I, I, I tend to be a pretty positive person. I, yes. I know there are plenty of people out there with uh, you know, mental health issues. Mm. I, my daughter being one of them, and I have a hard time just comprehending that, you know, mm. depression, anxiety, very common these days. And I, I, I got a taste of that. So it helped me appreciate what, what, they go through. The other thing I didn't I didn't count on was the emotional impact of the situation. You know, they always say, you know, cancer changes your life. You get a whole new outlook, and you don't really feel that until you feel that. Uh, I was I was at home recovering, and my boss, 
I, I let him know. I said, hey, look, I'm going to be out for a couple of weeks. He says, you do what you got to do. And then the, the, the VP, one step up in the ladder, sent a message back to me. He goes, take whatever time you need. Mm-hmm. We got this covered. And that just hit me like a wave going, holy moly, there's people out there that kill, I, that, that, that care about you that, you know, normally you think of your coworkers, your coworkers, you know, they'll, yeah. they'll cover while I'm on vacation. That's one thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but it's a little it, different. It's a little different. It, it's a lot different. And then, you know, I got a, a voicemail from my brother and my three nephews. And, you know, they, they, they made some joke or something. I was in tears over that thing. I, I, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be crying over an email or a voicemail, but just that level of outpouring and support and care, uh, you know, hit me. And it made me realize, you know, what can I do to help others who may be in the similar situation? So I had a very good friend from high school. We, we kept in touch because we're kind of related through Donna's side of the family, second hmm. marriage sort of thing. Yeah. So I kept in touch with him. And his name is Don. And Don was diagnosed about three weeks after I was. His surgery was a, a, several weeks after mine. But we kept in touch via text, via weekly phone calls, going back and forth as our own little support group. Uh, there's things the doctor will tell you, and there's things that my doctor will tell you, and there's the things that uh, you know I learned, and there's things that he learned, and what medication, and what instruments, and what procedures, and so we could bounce these off of each other. So when I went in for my regular appointments, I could say, "Hey, Doctor Ralph, or whatever," I said, "What about this?" And he said, mm. "Oh, yeah, you know, I've heard of that," or yeah, I think we discussed that. Uh, and uh, so we could have a deeper conversation. Information is power, particularly in situations quite literally where your life may be on the line. Find those people. So I offer this to, and I said this on LinkedIn as well. If you or anyone you know has been diagnosed or finds themselves in this situation or they're just questions, let me know. I'm an open book. I, I, I have had very, very personal conversations with other men in this situation. You might think you'll never talk to another man about some of these things, but boy, howdy, it helps. Well, thank, I really appreciate you also like being vulnerable to, to talk about it. And like I said, my dad recently struggled with something like this. He's similar to you. He's like five years in the clear now. So, but- Good. Good, good, good. I really appreciate the openness to to discussing that, especially on something like LinkedIn, where you kind of you don't even know where those posts go um, or who they're helping. So I really, I really appreciate you speaking about that. Learn, share, change lives. Well, similarly to learning, let me pivot to a little bit of a more lighthearted subject. Let's talk about knowledge. Why not? Oh, good. I thought you were going to talk about this morning's hap- a hazard. <laughs> Never oh, good. <laughs> And we'll leave that open-ended so that the audience can guess what that meant. (laughs) Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, you've attended every single one of the knowledge conferences, correct? No, no. Seven was the first one. Seven was the first one. It was simply (sighs) called the ServiceNow User Group. So it was technically a snug, but they didn't name it knowledge until eight. So you have. (laughs) <laughs> you have attended no, every- no, I didn't go to knowledge eight or nine. Nine was really close because we were a customer by that point and I was trained, but we didn't get the funding or whatever it was. I didn't get to nine, but I was at 10 as a customer. That's when I got the Innovation of the Year Award. Yes. A few weeks later, I was let go uh, mm-hmm. to the tune of about 10 days later. Uh, I was let go and that piece of paper helped me gain entry. I won't say secure the job, but gain entry. Uh, that and saying hello to a lot of the people at the conference, uh, Doug Schultz, uh, Jared Latham. Uh, some of them probably don't even remember when I did this, but I remember Fred Luddy, met Fred and his wife, sent Fred a thank you note. So there were some good professional career moves made there. Thank goodness. Yes. Uh, and, and that helped land a job. But I, when I got, the funny thing is when I got to Knowledge 11, Doug asked me to co-present with him on Discovery. Great. Mm. That was fun. So it was a nice way to, at that time, most of professional services went anyway, because they were training. We didn't really have a training department until Knowledge 12. Uh, the, the technical consultants were doing a lot of the pre-con training, me included. Uh, Carlene, uh, Carlene Carter, uh, Ian Bros, you know, a lot of the, the names that you might hear still in the ecosystem were there. And um, Knowledge 12, I did 
like a best practices session or it, it, it gradually got to be more and more. Now you get two sessions. Now, now you're going to do a, you know, a, li a, a build live demo. And by the time we got to 18, I just about my head exploded. I said, whoa, whoa, okay, we got to pump the brakes on this a little bit because <laughs> this isn't sustainable. I, I loved every minute of delivering it. It was the preparation leading up that kills it. You know this from your experiences in preparing for knowledge as well. So what, what you're trying to say though is that you've held basically every role kind of at knowledge. You've come as an attendee when you were a customer, you've yeah. run pre-con training, you've hosted demo booth, you've obviously transitioned into this role where you're kind of co-captaining, you know, creator con alongside our entire team. I would be so bold as to say that you have the most comprehensive vantage point of this event. Sorry, Jason. <laughs> given that, given that, wow. what traits of old, quote unquote, old knowledge do you want to see resurrected for future knowledge events? Well, we brought back the App of the Year Award. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. You know, I won the first one and then also got to introduce it, the rebirth of that as the Devies. That was truly a team effort. Yes. Uh, and it was on a scale unlike what I had gone through. Uh, and I'm really glad I got mine back in 2010 when the competition was much easier. <laughs> <laughs> there's no panel interview. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. There's, there's no making a video. There's, it was basically send in some screenshots and a write up and <laughs> congratulations. You're a finalist. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, what else would I like to see from, from old knowledge? Wow. Different locales, perhaps, or the power buttons. I want the power buttons back personally. Yeah, some the the theming, the mascots. That was that was a lot of fun. There was a certain creativity in the air mm. uh, at the old ones. Although we did change themes or logos every other year, it seemed like. So let's let's ditch that. Let's stay consistent on our branding for at least three years, if we could. At least um, save us some money on buying shirts. I know. <laughs> and ties and everything. And ties. Else. Socks, shoes. <laughs> it's a wardrobe thing at this point. When, True. When we went from the 2018 model, the John Donahoe, you know, dual green scheme. Uh, yeah. You know, I had a lot of shirts. Light purple, dark purple, light orange, dark orange, light blue, dark blue, light green, light dark green. We had a wide palette. And I, yeah. I you know, represented these on some of the videos if you watched the um, the community live stream we had what was it api adventures and technical deep dive and what and each of them had a color theme with them and then 2022 hey we're rebranding what am i gonna do with all these shirts fortunately most of them align with the liturgical calendar at church so we're in lent i'm wearing my purple <laughs> shirts from 2018 <laughs> <laughs> but a nice way to reduce, reuse, recycle. And fun fact, if you're looking for any fun stuff for knowledge to wear this year, um, check out Seahawks stuff. Uh, it's yes, pretty darn Seattle, close. Seattle, Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks is really close. Just leave off the logo. That's that's what a lot of people said. Oh, I love the Seahawks. Yeah. That's why yeah. there's 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 little uh, emojis on my tie. Because oh. if I just threw the colors on there, it would look like a Seahawks tie. That was not the intent. No. A fun fact, there's one dress I have, one side that's bright green, the other side that's navy. And you think, oh my gosh, you got a custom service now dress. There is a giant eagle on the back. But if you're not facing my back, you don't know that's the case. The, the one that I would love to get, and, and I wish I had asked somebody, when we were in Australia in 2022, a lot of their public works people had on the safety jackets and they were like oh. bright green on top and dark bluish on bottom yeah. but it was almost spot on i think i saw one in new york too now i'm tempted to you know ask the guy taking the lid off the sewer hey where'd you get that jacket <laughs> hey where where are you shopping these days <laughs> yeah now unfortunately we gotta start closing up th things a little bit so i wanted to talk about what's on the horizon in the 13 years you've worked at ServiceNow, you've held five titles, you've worked under all four CEOs, and as we just mentioned, suffered under four rebrands. <laughs> you've seen massive waves of change. Uh, so what is still on the plate goal-wise for your lasting impact at ServiceNow? Uh, I would like to continue to help define what our developer brand is. 
Ooh, uh, you know, like we mentioned that. the 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 power button, you know, the the button guys at Knowledge and yeah. whatnot. I'd like to see more of that create creativity come back. Something that resonates more than Gilroy Bold. <laughs> you know, our developers, it, it, the the whole ecosystem. When you win a T-shirt, it's something you want to wear. Yeah, and and and, yes. and it generates questions and interests and. Uh, it, there's there's a lot to explore there and a lot to unpack and we are working closely with our brand team on ideas so hopefully knocking on wood we'll get something sometime uh, so that discussion is at least happening now that's been a pet project of mine since when did Marcelo start 2021 something yeah. like that so it's it's coming up on three years that I I started working on a plan now it may not be my idea for the theme but we will have a theme which is exciting it's already exciting to see that i mean that influence is slowly coming out in our events so keep a keen eye on the big events that service now is doing and and in, in the de developer realm at least and see you'll see some things starting to slowly come out i think that'll make everyone pretty excited I've, I've also been living the last several years you know, mm -hmm. maybe it was cancer maybe it was something else but i know i'm playing the back nine on this golf course you know i'm oh. i'm in my late 50s there's only so many years ahead of me whether it's two five ten my my mission right now is to pass the knowledge to enable the next generation as much as possible again that that learn share change lives thing comes into play here but uh you know make sure you and earl and pranav and you know hopefully we'll get some head count and <laughs> I can wish. Uh, dream big. Dream big. <laughs> <laughs> to 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 pass that on, you know, and 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 also I appreciate, you know, the the new viewpoints that everybody brings as we add new team members. I'm not that old stodgy guy that goes, well, this is the way we're doing it, and this is my way. <laughs> no, no, everybody brings new perspectives. I realize that I don't see things through the the same lens. You watch videos and have a closer eye on on you know millennials and Gen Xers than I do, and you know we're constantly having discussions about movies and songs and whatnot, and I'm like oh, I have no idea what that is, and you're making it <laughs> again. But I'm listening, and I want to know how does that impact what we do and how we do it, and always open to the ideas as as well as you know sharing my experience, and together I think that's a winning combination. Well, our final question of the day. I think it's very rare to hear people talk about their corporate job with the joy that you do. Um, I've even heard you imply that this really isn't a job anymore because you're so passionate about it. It's just kind of like a fun project that you get to do. So I, I think that's very rare. I think that I, I really hope that a lot of people find that joy, but I don't know if that's the case. So what words of advice do you have for those people that are out there seeking to find that and what is the biggest conductor of joy to prioritize? Uh, be patient. Mm. You know, when I was swapping out motherboards at 3 a.m. when I was much, much younger in an earlier part of my career, it didn't really bring me that much joy. You know, you, fair. <laughs> there's things you have to do, you know, staying awake for all night due to an OS upgrade back when OS was on tape. You know, there's, yeah. there's going to be parts of your job that you have to do do them well do you it's the same message i gave my kids every day when i dropped them off for school you don't have to get a's just do your best and if you do your best it, it, it will work out much better if you just give a half-hearted attempt it's gonna show and it's gonna come back to haunt you so do your best be patient and as far as where to cultivate to get the 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 best oomph out of your career relationships 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 you know make friends with people in your organization as well as outside of your organization this this was hugely evident when i went to knowledge 10 i was you know just doing what i do normally i i talk to people shake hands make comments uh about what their laptop bag is or at one point we were playing lightsabers on our iPods, I think it was at the time, we didn't <laughs> iPhones. And you know, just interactions like that pay dividends. Not just make the connections, keep them alive. Yes. Like when you meet at a conference, stay in touch with those. And you're like, wow, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of time. Well, you're going to find 10 days after you get back from that conference, like I did, you may be let go. 
two of those, I had job leads within a few hours. Some, yes. some one of them was within minutes. Like, wow, this networking thing really, really works. You know, that was that was hard evidence for me anyway that it, it, it does pay. So invest in those relationships. It is currency and and you got to give back also you can't just be like take 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 you got to <laughs> give back so uh you know volunteer to do things that you normally wouldn't get out of your comfort zone and explore those challenges uh you, that's where the growth happens even if you don't succeed you grow you're going to learn yeah. something so man we could we could do a whole podcast for days just on career tips but i won't go there well add that to the queue <laughs> this doesn't have to be your last big interview Chuck, it has been such a joy to interview you here today. Thank you so much for all these fantastic answers. I know that I loved hearing them. I, I can imagine how much the audience loved learning more about you and your fantastic you. life. And so we want to have one more moment. So if you're not watching this podcast, please click over to the video just so you can see. We have sent Chuck a surprise. So you can now open up your surprise. There's actually two. Cookies! One is cookies. Oh. One is some crumble cookies. I, I want see. to send a cake but I thought, well, I don't know how well they'll come from Texas. Yeah. So, so crumble the cookies, cookies are always the same. Holy <laughs> crap, these are huge cookies. Have That's... you not had crumble cookies before? No. So fun fact, if you look up their calorie People, content. Look at the size of these things. They're like pizzas. <laughs> If you look up the calorie content, they're like, oh, that's not too bad. Each cookie is four servings. I was going to say, yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah. Okay. But and I just real. lost all that extra weight from the last cruise. So I could fit into this shirt for the Washington launch. So the, okay. so the, the real, next one. Yeah. Is this is big this. tube? The big tube, a FedEx triangle box. I brought my ServiceNow box opener. Oh, multi tool that's nice. thing. Was that Dale Stubblefield that gave that to me? Somebody. I, I think I, it was I, Dale. Shout out to Dale Stubblefield. Okay, so open. Something rolled up. It is. <laughs> nice. That's actually okay. Very it says cute. break point. Wait, wait. Yeah. We got to see what else. That's all I can read on the end. We have to unfurl <laughs> the sacred scrolls. I love the uh, ASMR of unwrapping that's also being included in this podcast. Okay, so from the bottom, it says break point from the bottom. I'm going up. Got to get this on camera yet. I still have to be able to talk on microphone. Here we go. <laughs> break point, 100 episodes of break point. And then there's a picture of lots of people. Who are these people? Do we know these people? These are every, so these are oh. all the guests that you've had. Oh my break. gosh. David Liu. I see Arnaud. I these are the guests we interviewed? Every single one. Oh, you're kidding. Yes. I, no, not, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Every single guest you oh, have yeah. break point. Oh, my gosh. All my friends. Are yeah. you in here? Are you yeah. in here? Yeah. Okay, because you we interviewed you. Oh, there you are. Yeah. <laughs> oh, in my knowledge, 22 pose. Heck, yeah. How <laughs> nice that they had those big resolution photos on our brand website. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Lauren, that is so precious. Uh, it's so special. It's, and now if you can't see it, if you are watching, if you're not watching, the, the people's faces are black and white. So the green on the shirt really pops. Yeah. Really I love it pops. Too. I wanted to thank everyone that's appeared on Breakpoint because these episodes would not be here without all of you as well. Yes. Um, I'll post this image on LinkedIn. So check out LinkedIn. I'll post the high res image. So find <laughs> that yourself. Be cover art. Yeah, so find yourself in the picture if you can. Unfortunately, a couple of 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 y'all are kind of in Chuck's armpit. I apologize, but so it had to that be Earl. Earl. Earl is in the little bit. I apologize. <laughs> There's only so many spots, guys. I, I did my best. I'm not a Photoshop <laughs> wizard, so that took some time. Wow. I'm. I now I have to get a frame for this. This is just too much. Oh, that's precious. I'm happy you like it. Congratulations. I do very, very much. Well, uh, I think you should play us out. Any any place that people should come find you or any links that you want to include? On oh, they, I think all the people listening are already following. So, yeah, LinkedIn. <laughs> well, there's the Washington calendar. So we're pretty much at the end of their Washington content. Isn't that amazing the already? The episode comes out. Yeah. So yeah, be yeah. sure to check out devlink.sn slash Washington, and that'll list pretty much everything that our team has made for the Washington release on to Xanadu. Yep. We've got, uh, and, and if you'd missed it, you know, we mentioned the website a couple of times, the center of my universe is chucktomasi.com. So that'll point to 
LinkedIn and Amazon and GitHub and YouTube and wherever else I put stuff. So easy enough. Thank you so much. This was a lot of fun. Who's this doing the ending cool. of this show? I don't know what the ending is. I forgot to write it down. So, so, <laughs> so if you know the ending. I, I, I have most of it memorized after 100 episodes. Thank you, lovely listener, for joining us today. Thank you, Lauren, for all of the hard work. I appreciate it. If you're looking for other ServiceNow podcasts, you can go over to the community, servicenow.com slash community, under the events menu of all places. Seems like it ought to be on our resources or something, but that's where the podcasts are. There are many, many others that you can subscribe to, get them automatically delivered to you for free. Breakpoint is produced by me and Lauren, mostly Lauren on this one. <laughs> and we invite you to explore more of the things we offer developers at developer.servicenow.com. Once again, thank you so much, Lauren. It has been a treat. Thank you. And thank you to all of our wonderful listeners for listening to 100 episodes of Breakpoint. We will see you in 101. Please let us know what you think about this podcast. You can leave feedback or ask questions in the ServiceNow community. For more great information on ServiceNow development, check out the ServiceNow developer portal at developer.servicenow.com. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.